Right, so I've got loads more done on the Princess. Well, it looks like a lot, and there is a lot of work. There's still lots to do, obviously, but we've got like most of the floor panels in now. Um, I started out with the putting the inner sills in. Obviously, I'd cut off all of the really rusty outer sill and kind of inner sill section. The problem with this car was really everything from the doors and the doors really down was completely rotten and I was I was kind of hoping to use a lot of it but quite quickly realized that yes this car is not what I originally intended it to be it has escalated but that's okay that's part of the fun for me obviously you saw the kind of gearbox tunnel that I'd started to fabricate and then it was about that uh, thin thin wall box section frame which is what was going to take all the floor panels so yeah there's quite a lot of work in squaring all that up getting it all nice and level as level as i can get it without the car being on a jig obviously um and then fabricating those inner sills um, which really are just flat sheets of steel cut to size prepped and primed tacked in i'm lucky that the underside of the doorstep section is all really good it's all in its original paint underneath there so there's no rust repair to do on any of that which has actually made this process a ton easier so yeah with those inner sills in i could then begin to start fabricating the floor knowing that there was a bit more structure in the car now and that kind of led on to the front wheel tubs um, which also form kind of like the heel board section or the, you know whatever you want to call it the kickboard right so now that i've got a load of this box section in which is going to kind of be the beginnings of the floor and how the floor is going to go together. Um, obviously, in the floor, we'll join into the sills. Uh, the, the kind of sill, as people call it, is kind of made up as like three pieces. You get an inner sill, the outer sill, and then the doorstep area, or like the inside door shut, or whatever you want to call it. And as a three, they make a kind of tubular structure, which is the, the full sill, which is where most strength comes from in most cars. And of course, I want to put that back in. I don't need as much strength there as what the Princess had originally because of the chassis that I've kind of fabricated under the car. But I still want it to be pretty stout. So we're obviously going to have to rebuild that. It was all rotten. That's why I just cut it all out and we're starting again. I mean, obviously, we've got to a point now where I'm obviously not really that interested in replicating what was here on the original Princess. And there's a lot more to cut out yet. Most of the back end I'm going to cut out. I'm at a point now we are, we are literally just going to end up with the outer silhouette of a Princess and everything else is going to be, you know, refabricated. So then you get to the problem of when you cut out so much stuff, where do you start putting it all back in? And I don't know is the answer. <laughs> I think really it's a case of start with the easy bits and move forward from there so that's what I'm doing I'm going to put in a piece of steel between the floor here and the sill um, and that's going to obviously begin to add strength into this floor section and then put some strength back into our inner doorstep piece because obviously the doorstep is the only bit of princess we've got left so I've cut a piece of steel and that will then give me a middle section, which then allows me to concentrate on the front or the back. Again, start with the easy bits, put the middle piece in, and then do the more difficult bits uh, at the end. Because obviously once I get that in, it will actually stiffen up this box section frame as well. Um, not obviously none of this is fully welded yet, but yeah, you just gotta start somewhere. So I'm starting with the easy bits. So I'm gonna get this, uh, get, get this quick wipe down, get some um, primer on it, and then, uh, yeah, we can get to put in this piece of uh, steel that I've cut in. I haven't actually been super methodical throughout this whole process with weld through primer and, and things like that, purely because I know this car is probably, um, not going to do much mileage on the road. I really can't see it being out in the wet much. It's more or less always going to be dry stored. I ain't too worried about rust proofing. You know, when you're putting in lots of new steel, I think it's something you almost don't even need to worry about. Obviously, unless you're building a super concourse car or something that you do want to be still mint and original, 
in 10 or 15 years time, then obviously go for it and prime up everything. But yeah, it's, uh, it's not really for me. So I need to decide where I'm gonna put the kind of middle as such, and I'm actually not gonna put it in the middle of the car. The reason for that is the doorstep starts to come out a bit on this end. Um, so I'm actually gonna put the middle about here. <sighs> Don't ask me why, but it's just what I'm gonna do it. I don't even know what I'm chatting today. I'm chatting rubbish. I just feel like I've got to do some audio. So that's one bit in. You wouldn't believe how much that just stiffens everything up. And I've not put anything in that, it's just a complete flat panel. Um, I'm probably gonna try and invest in a uh, swager and put in like uh, fancy patterns in there because it would have been cool to do some, some ovals or something like that. Not that you're gonna see it, it'll end up carpeted anyway, but again, it just adds a little bit of strength and stops you just having like a, a flat panel. If you have too many flat panels, they can become a bit vibratey. Yeah, but that's that. Um, I would now normally just do the same on the other side, but uh, I'm not going to worry about that just yet. Um, I'm going to start looking at what I need to do to complete either front or back. And both of it's going to involve some cutting out, so I need to move the camera. I think uh, we've gone beyond the point of using that. Obviously it had like an oversill, loads of filler. That's a bit of the inside. So yeah, that's a, uh, again, there's no point in trying to cut all this out and like repair this. You know, we're modifying the car to such an extent that, you know, why even bother try and repair this? Just, just make completely new panels. I mean, you're never gonna, chop out all of that rust. It's all just rusty. So, yeah, it's best to get rid. A lot of putting back, but, yep, it is what it is. Right, so I have got another panel in now. So I've got the middle piece, and then you can just see there, I've got the front piece in as well. And that front piece kind of, um, kind of runs me to like the edge of the floor really. Just see there. And to the end of my piece of box section. And that is gonna be kind of where um, like the, the floor becomes wheel tub. So I'm definitely gonna have a piece of box section across here to form the end of that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a piece of sheet in which comes up and goes all the way around. That follows the original kind of line up here to get to um, like this bit at the top. It's quite hard to show it, but there's a piece at the top here, um, which has got quite a, quite a nice crease. So basically I'm gonna try and fill in that section there. Um, and that'll be like the first kind of third of the wheel tub. So it'll go from, from like the floor, the floor height piece, all the way up 
to to that piece at the top there and that will be filling another kind of hole in really um, so yeah that's the first bit to crack on with I'm going to get a piece of box section cut tack that in then I'm going to start cutting all of this uh, out and like squaring it all up getting all the metal clean back so I'll probably take the wheel off and put the car on a stand to do that because so it's getting to the point where it's uh, it's getting hard to access with the wheel on right so I've got the the sill panels in now, um, obviously still just on the one side, I haven't done the other side yet. And I've cut out more of the wheel well, so again we've got even less of the Princess there now, obviously we can see the tyre there just about, and all the suspension. Um, and it's because I'm trying to make the foot well as big as possible and also give ourselves the wheel arch clearance that we need. Because all this is going to kind of be the same, the, what would be like the heel board here is obviously going to be the inner arch as well. So. The next panel to put in is this floor panel. I've, I've cut a piece out and folded it up, put two return lips on it. Now I know that, again, that this piece here is gonna be probably a different shape to what I've cut out on the end. It's, it's hard to explain. But what I need to do is get, get some piece of floor in, so that allows me then to join all the panels onto this, um, because then we've got a sill or an inner sill a floor piece and then I can begin to make that in a wheel arch. Um, I've, so I've cut this panel out, I just need to trim a bit out round here for a weld off of this piece of box section, um, just a clearance around that weld. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to trim a bit more back on this edge because if I leave it, it's almost butting up to the inner sill. If I leave it like that, I'm never going to be able to weld it. I'll be able to weld the panel into the sill, but I won't. Like at the minute, the sill is not welded to that piece of box section. It's only tacked on. And if I leave it kind of butting up, I won't be able to actually, when I weld it, penetrate into the box section. And I, I don't want to kind of, I want to try and leave as much final welding on all the panel work until I've got most of the panel work in. Because again, that's where all the structure comes from and I want to give it the least amount of chance to move around. So I'm going to trim about 10 mil all the way off the edge of that panel trim that bit out there just take a little nick out there and then it'll be a case of really taking this panel out etch prime in the back of it but i need to weld up all these pieces of box section on the floor or at least weld the tops of them because again once i've got that panel in i won't be able to get at the welds underneath So it's been a few days now and I'm a bit further along. Um, what I've got is that uh, just clamped on there now, what I had in cardboard. Um, and I've kind of trimmed, I've kind of marked around here where that's going to need to be cut. But I, what I'll probably try and do is form a, form a, a return flange on that. I don't want to have to like MIG weld every joint because you end up uh, doing a lot of welding. <laughs> So that'll be that. Um, and then I've also got two of the floor panels in now. Um, well, this one's in, in, um, like tacked from the underneath. And then I've got this one, like just, just dropped in for now. I've obviously got all the backs of them primed and stuff like that. The only thing I'm not sure about is this is quite a big panel here. And, um, I'm worried it's going to vibrate a bit. Now, normally what you'd do is like you'd, you'd, you'd kind of, you know, roll a bead in it or some kind of shape or something like that. But obviously I don't have a bead roller. It's kind of on the to-do list to buy one. And this kind of is the perfect 
car and job that I kind of need one for. But, you know, um, got to make do with what we've got. So I kind of feel like it, any bigger than this and I'd be really worried. But it'll probably be okay. It's going to have like sound deadening on it, you know, like the stick on sound deadening. So hopefully that'll take out most of the vibration. And then the car will have like quite a heavy carpet on it as well. Again, I'm not building like a stripped out race car. Yeah, I hope, hopefully this will be a, you know, a nice car to drive. You know, I want it to be like well furnished and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm getting on with this, with the floor quite well. I obviously just need to, yeah, then do exactly the same again on the other side, basically. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this one tacked in. Um, I've got the car up on stands now because it was uh, getting really awkward to kind of tack the underneath. So I've got it up on stands. I'm gonna get this rear one tacked in and then I'm gonna just uh, hopefully just be able to smash through the other side. So same process as the other side now. Take these out, give the backs of them a really good clean up and a key up, get a load of etch primer on them, then get them tacked in. Starting to look uh, pretty cool. Probably not gonna bother filling in this top bit yet. Um, I guess because I don't need to, I might end up moving where the gear shifter is, so. That kind of feels like a waste of time making a panel up um, just for my own satisfaction really but yeah then we've got to work out these holes here at the back and then also starting to think about the wheel tubs so yeah once I've got these in there'll be uh, quite a bit more cutting out to do once they're all tacked a load, of, load more cutting out at the back yeah and then make some wheel tubs I'm really happy with how it's come out. Obviously, I would have liked to have done some like cool bead roller in things, but I still haven't got a bead roller, so um, I wasn't able to do that. I think it'll be okay. I don't think it's gonna to be too vibrating, but really we'll probably only know in time. All things that can be fixed, you know, it's not the end of the world. And then with the most of the floor fabricated, it was a case of, or tacked in. We obviously were left with some big holes at the back where, again, the rear bulkhead has had to change shape quite a bit because of the prop shaft, the size of the rear wheels, and then getting those rear wheel tubs in. So again, more or less just started out by fabricating the tub, rolling it out, putting a back on it, cutting enough out of the back that it would fit over all the suspension components, getting them in, squaring them off each other. Sounds like a long process, it kind of is. And then squaring them off with the car body. And again, they're pretty accurate. They're, they're close enough really for what we need. Right, so now that we've got the floor to the same stage on both sides, you know, we've got it all the way kind of front to the back quarter. Um, it's time to start concentrating 
on the rear tubs because we need something to connect the the kind of sill to obviously on the front we put the, the kind of f rear portion of the front tub in which becomes like the the heel board i guess because we've got the transmission tunnel that splits what would be the bulkhead whereas on the back we haven't got that um so yeah we need to actually put a full wheel tub in there and then that'll be what the sill connects to but we've got to get this this massive chunk of rusty crap out first, which is all just what's left of the original um, mounting for the like rear suspend the original rear suspension. It's the same as what's on the Allegro, but of course it's all rusty. It's all like multi layers of just shite. So yeah, we're going to cut all that out, all that rusty crap out, and then make it make it nice and shiny and new with the new wheel tub. So I've, I've put a cut down here, which has kind of detached the, this, this big rusty section from this piece, which is where our uh, rear subframe mount starts. You can see where the welds come through. But, but as I cut that, the gap kind of closed up a little bit. So I've braced it across with uh, a piece of box section onto this door brace we put in. That'll hold it at the at the correct gap or what is roughly the correct gap. Again, I was just trying to make sure that when I put a door back on this, not that really the doors are any good, but when I put a door back on it, the rusty, crappy, horrible door we've got matches the, the shape. So yeah, I'll get the rest of that cut out now and um, we'll start thinking about this wheel tub. So with all this cut off, again, you can uh, you can see now that, yeah, really, it's never going to make anything of that. It's all useless and super heavy. Um, there's a, yeah, there's a, a lot of weight there. Um, but we can begin to assess now what the condition of this kind of inner wheel arch is, because like I've said, I want to, if I can, keep um, as much of this, this door step as possible because obviously that that this piece is uh is this piece which is obviously the inner door step so we want to keep all that if we can well we've, we've got to so we'll have to repair it if it was bad but yeah what we can see is that most of this is good it's still in its original uh black undercoat or whatever with uh with some kind of greasy wax on it but I've just cut off the original, so that piece was, was there, like that. And again, that's all rusty in the seam and stuff, so that had to come off anyway. Yeah, there's just a small amount of rust on the back of there, so we don't need to worry about that. But I've got to get this piece cut out now, um, because again, that's all rusty in all of the seams, so that's all got to go. So yeah, there's really not going to be a lot left, because again, it's all gone from the back already. We did all that a while back, so there's nothing there. Um, it's just getting this front all chopped out and then of course we'll have to do the same again on the other side But once we've got, so we've got all the rock cut out and it's symmetrical on both sides, then we can decide what we're going to do in terms of uh, You know recreating it Right, so what I've done now is I've taken the spring off of the um, shock absorber and I have jacked the wheel up so that it's kind of touching the bump stops or the bump stop. It's, it's slightly compressed into the bump stop, but obviously has a bit more to go. And, and basically the mistake I made when I cut that wheel arch out, bear in mind, this, this was the worst side. This one was all rusty anyway. The mistake I made when I cut the wheel arch out was um, that I, I measured uh, the radius of what the cutout should be when the wheel was at full droop. And of course that's the wrong thing to or at least at ride height but that's the wrong thing to do uh really you need to do it when the wheel's full compression because obviously that's as far as the wheel's going to go up in the wheel arch now luckily i've got about 15 20 mil gap between the tire and what i'd cut out now bearing in mind this tire is a little bit worn down it's not a new tire and we've got a little bit more compression to go in the bump stop 
So actually, I think that gap's probably about right. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about changing that. The only thing is I've got too big of a gap behind the wheel and in front of the wheel. Now, in front of the wheel and behind the wheel, I can't really do anything about anyway, because like I say, they were the crusty part of the wheel arch, as you can see, that's all super frilly. And that will become uh, a new wheel arch flare anyway, in whatever way we create that. So I've cut out a lot of all of that rot and there's a few bits and bobs in there that need cleaning up, but it's time consuming work and I'm gonna leave that because, you know, can't bother to do that at the minute. I wanna get on with some fun stuff. So what I'm gonna do first is cut a piece of steel, just so I can begin to visualize it. I'm gonna cut a piece of steel, which, I mean, I kind of measured around the, the wheel art or the wheel as such. And I'm just gonna cut a bit that's a meter and that is a fair chunk of, of what the wheel arch will be. It'd be a metre around. And then I'm gonna roll it so that it's roughly the same radius as the wheel. And then I'm gonna put it in there and, and begin to think about how I might attach it. Because yeah, I can't quite see it at the minute, but I'm sure once I've got a piece of steel in there and I can, and I can see it, then yeah, it'll probably begin to make a lot more sense. As you can see, I've done what I didn't want to do, and rolled it a bit too much. I'm gonna risk it and roll it back. But obviously, with a bit less roll on it. That's probably going to be a bit closer. And again, just rolling it back the other way, basically. Now it's probably not enough. So yeah, I've got the... This piece rolled pretty well. Uh, a meter is long enough to go over halfway around the wheel, which is probably all we're gonna need. Longer might have been more hard work, to be honest. So yeah, I've got quite a big gap to fill in behind, which I'll show in a minute, and then there's obviously quite a big gap at the front here. Because like I said, th this is more or less all the clearance the wheel arch is ever going to need. Um, obviously this would be up. I'm not gonna rest on top of the tire, obviously. But really what I need to do now is kind of fix this radius. So I'm gonna need another piece, which is like, like a semicircle of the radius of the wheel or slightly bigger than the radius of the wheel, which will get welded to the back, to the back of here. Right, it's gonna be really hard to show, but um, I've cut out like a, the back of what the, of what the wheel tub will be. It's like a semicircle, obviously, but it needs to have a big cutout in it for the suspension arms to go through. So obviously with the wheel, like at the height, um, at like what would be full bump, the obviously the wheel tub needs to then be, you know, a little bit higher than that. So that's how I've got it set up, or roughly, and then I've obviously cut out that piece of cardboard so that it clears all the suspension arms, or, or roughly. Again, we'll be able to trim it a bit after, but I just want to make sure that I can um, do the same both sides. Just want to be sure that I can do the same thing on both sides, like have the two semicircles and, and wheel tubs sat in there um, so that they're, yeah, I can, then I can square them off against each other and that they're not going to clear, they, they, that they are going to clear the suspension arms and stuff. If we need to trim it more after, we can obviously do that. So I'll go ahead and cut out two of those cardboard bits now and then tack it onto the uh, wheel tub that we've made. And then, um, yeah, we can, we can get them in and that'll start to look pretty cool. But we are nearly there now. I'm, so I'm really happy with it because it's when you get to this point, you can, it really starts to look like a real car. Like it, it's not just full of holes. There's loads of brand new metal. It's not all rusty and it's fun. You know, I'm kind of like enjoying the methodical process of like taking off the paint, getting all of the rust areas gone, 
obviously there will be a lot of that to do. Um, I'm trying to leave as much of the beige paint as I can so that the car still looks beige. But yeah, we've got to, got to get rid of all this uh, stuff on the top of the doorstep. But then the next thing I started to think about was this, uh, this outer sill. So of course, this is obviously very different to a princess outer sill. Um, and, an, and I have two options really when it comes to the sill. We're gonna need wheel arches front and back. We've known that because the wheels are so much wider, the track width is so much wider, and that's the look I wanted. But I could keep the sill the same. But having played around with it a little bit, I'm now pretty sure I'm gonna go for this uh, kind of like fat, wide sill look. Um, I think it makes the car look a lot lower. I mean, it is already pretty low. I think, I think because the Princess is quite angular, we can get away with a lot of angular panel work and I quite like that. It's quite fun to make it kind of boxy. So that's more or less where I'm at now in terms of like the next jobs on the car. It's gonna be um, starting to think about the wheel arches, what kind of shape they might be and how that's gonna look, which allows me to think about how I'm gonna fabricate these outer sills and once the outer sills are fabricated and welded, obviously I can start to get rid of this structural box section we put in because I'll have a, uh, a normal kind of sill structure again. The only thing I'm not sure about is, I mean, we've got such a huge void here in where the sill is. I might need a kind of inner, a, a secondary inner sill. That will create what is the structure of the sill and then this could be more of a, I guess, add-on outer wide sill. It will still be welded to the car body, but it will. if I leave it like this, it's such a big structure that you're not really gonna get a lot of strength in it. We don't need a huge amount of strength because that's what all the chassis is for. But obviously, it's gonna be a road car. It is a four-door, got heavy doors. The B pillar is kind of really, gets most of its strength at the bottom from the sill. So yeah, I want to make sure that it's strong enough that when you shut the doors, you know, when you slam the doors, things aren't kind of, uh, you know, moving around and flexing. But yeah, that's kind of where we're at. So hopefully in the next episode, we'll have a bit of a wheel arch prototype made and I'll have these sills, uh, these sills on the car and all of the holes filled in on the inside. I want to try and get all of the holes filled in, um, all of the kind of, original paint off that isn't needed, get it all primed up and, and all of the interior floor welded. And then that allows me to start thinking about pedal boxes, seats and steering columns. So there's still loads to do, but um, yeah, it's so much fun to work on this car and I'm loving all the comments, people are loving it. Um, of course, I haven't built it for other people, I'm just doing it for me, but it's really cool that other people are really into it. So yeah, thanks for watching and um, I hope it's been another enjoyable episode.